Welcome back. In a moment, we'll be discussing what it's like to grow up in the Central African Republic. But first, here are some other stories to keep an eye on. The UN Secretary General has sacked the commander of the peacekeeping force in South Sudan. A special investigation highlighted a catalogue of failures which endangered the lives of civilians during heavy fighting in the capital between the 8th and 11th of July. Three Bulgarians have been detained following a discovery of over $14 million worth of fake euro notes hidden in a reservoir. Police officials said the fakes were of very high quality. It's one of the largest amounts of counterfeit euros ever encountered. And Japan has launched a weather satellite into space in an attempt to raise awareness among children about the wonders of the universe. The H-2A rocket was decked out in colourful artwork created using 30,000 digital images. Now here's a grim statistic. According to findings by the Commonwealth Secretariat, the Central African Republic is the worst country in the world to be young. Insights Yasmin Katun spoke to Rafiola Kaka, the principal researcher of the report. Can you tell me a little bit about this report? So of the 183 countries included in the index, Central African Republic scored the lowest in its overall levels of youth development. The countries that scored the lowest in the youth development index, uh, almost all of them tend to score very low in the domains of health and education. The same is the case with Central African Republic. Uh, for example, Central African Republic has some of the lowest scores for indicators on education and health and well-being. To uh, quote an example, uh, secondary enrollment rate in Central African Republic is just 17%. In contrast, if you look at the secondary enrollment rate average for the Sub-Saharan African region as a whole, it is 47%. Similarly, approximately two-thirds of the young people in Central African Republic are illiterate. So these figures, the gap is really huge. These figures are, uh, the scores are very low even in comparison with the sub-Saharan African average. What do you mean by well-being? Uh, can you break that down for me? So we basically have six indicators to measure health and well-being. Uh, so we have like indicators like youth mortality rate. We also have indicators on mental health. We have an indicator on alcohol abuse, on drug abuse. And then we have an indicator on, uh, on well-being. There is a global well-being index uh, which measures the well-being of young people. It's both psychological and emotional. What factors such as conflict take into account when putting your report together? One of the important findings was that those countries that have registered the largest decline in their youth development scores over the past five years, they tend to be affected by some form of conflict. So based on those findings, uh, we, we won't be surprised if the low score of Central African Republic has something to do with the conflict that is going on in the country. And what do you hope to achieve as a result of this report? There are basically three goals of this report. Number one is to measure and monitor progress on youth development. The second purpose is to identify areas for intervention and reform. So for example, in case of Central African Republic, uh, the data tells us that Health and education are the key areas that need to be prioritized in the national development planning. And the last goal of this report and index is to advocate for more and better data. One of the key challenges that we face in the youth development sector is lack of sufficient age desegregated data. And in the development world, what doesn't, uh, what doesn't get counted doesn't get solved. Well, still with us in the studio is Hilary Margolis from Human Rights Watch. And we're joined from Yale University in the States by Louisa Lombard. A terrible prospect for young people in Central Africa then, Louisa. And these reports of abuse presumably are not going to be investigated and perpetrators found, given the chaotic nature of the country right now. Well, I think that there have been a number of efforts to try to investigate what's been going on. I know that people in the UN mission have been working hard on that. It's a very difficult subject to do research on, uh, and I don't know the exact status of the investigations, but people are, are trying to work on this. 
Do you think, um, Hilary Margolis, that one of the accusations is that the very people who went to Central Africa to help out some of the peacekeeping troops, for instance, are actually the perpetrators of abuse on vulnerable people? Unfortunately, I think that that is the case, and this is not a problem that's uh, unique to Central African Republic. We've seen this in the Congo, in Haiti, in numerous other countries where there have been peacekeeping missions. Um, like Louisa said, I think there have been efforts by the UN mission to investigate, and um, you know we're continuing to push them to to make good on those those promises. Um, but one of the other issues that we've really been looking at is sexual violence by armed groups. And we actually believe that there's far more, there are far more cases of rape and other forms of sexual violence being perpetrated by parties to the conflict than, for example, by UN peacekeepers. No wonder then, Louise, this is such a grim place for young people to grow up with the prospect of being hungry for much of your life, very difficult finding a job. It's not good, is it? No, it's an incredibly difficult person to be, really to be anyone, but perhaps especially to be a young person looking ahead at your future and thinking about what lies in wait for you. You know, we've really seen since the mid-1990s in this country, the educational system has been really disrupted with many years of what are called année blanche, uh, years when schools are not in session. Um, so it's really a full generation or even more than a generation at this point who haven't benefited from a proper education and the kind of security that can come from that. And then, as you mentioned, job prospects are truly dismal. I mean, the only area that seems to be a growth area in the country is working for an international humanitarian organization, and, and that's not exactly where anybody would want their prospects to lie, really. Uh, thank you, Louisa. I mean, Hillary, that idea of better jobs and a better future, if we try and put an optimistic spin on this, if it's possible, the potential is there, isn't it, with the natural resources and perhaps with the right kind of leadership for this country to move on? I think the potential is there, but what has to happen is I mean, there has to be prolonged security and stability. And the parties to the conflict who continue to you know, rear their heads because they're not satisfied and they don't feel that they've been um, taken into account enough in the government, there has to be some form of reconciliation, there has to be some form of um, real peace that's established that allows the country to then really rebuild um, and things like education systems, health systems, judicial systems to function again properly. Yeah, to put all that infrastructure which most countries take for granted, I suppose. Is it simply a matter of getting the politics right then? If there was greater representation and politics seem to better reflect the nature of the country and all the pressure groups, north and south, and religious divides. Would that smooth things over, do you, or do you think the disputes run too deep right now? I think it's hard to say. I mean, I think that there are, you know, certainly that's, that would be a big step. Um, but there are grievances that, that go very deep, that are, are very long term, um, that would have to be addressed. And there also has to be efforts to demilitarize the country, um, to you know, mobilize people towards other kinds of um, And if there's work. no will to demilitarize, or is there? Um, I, I mean, think I there it's, is. It's naive to sort of talk yeah, about think... polls. It's impossible in a country like that. But do you detect from the Central Africans you've met and worked with, is there a will to try and move on past the guns and the factional fighting and to a more peaceful future? Well, certainly among people on the ground, people, civilians in the communities, there is, absolutely. They really want peace. They really want stability. Um, they want the opportunity for their children to grow up in a better place. Hilary Margulis, great to have you with us. Thank you. We end our program with Insight Bite. This is a little something that we feel you should know. Today, we are taking a sneak peek at the predicted food trends of 2017. According to a survey, conscious consumers will be tucking into watermelon juice, raw fish and vegetable yoghurt. British supermarket chain Waitrose and the social media giant Instagram teamed up after examining the posts uploaded to social media by 18 to 34 year olds. A report highlighted posting pictures that diners online and mean that meals have become a form of self-expression in the same way as clothes people wear, the cars they drive, and the music they listen to. Well, that's all for now. I'm Martin Stanford. That was Inside.